We're now only a couple of days away from Apple's Scary Fast October event, and it looks like we already have confirmation that this event will be focused on new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros with the M3 Pro and M3 Max chips. But wait a second, what about the regular M3 chip? Is Apple really going to skip it and save it for next year? Or is that actually coming next week as well? And if it is, which consumer Macs are gonna show up? Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna answer in this video by explaining two plausible theories surrounding the M3 chip reveal. But first, I wanna get into exactly what you should expect in terms of the new features, specs, and performance of those new high-end MacBook Pros. As far as the design, we shouldn't expect any physical changes at all on the outside. Now, there are some who think we might be getting a matte black version of the MacBook Pro, but they could could easily stay exactly the same. As for the features, the one thing I can see them possibly adding is Face ID into the already existing notch. That by itself would make it more of a desirable upgrade for those who love Face ID on their iPhones. But other than that, there really isn't much to upgrade until they fully redesign it in a couple of years, so most of the changes are going to be on the inside, specifically with the new chips. Starting with the M3 Pro, this one is quite interesting because Mark Gurman leaked the specs back in May, and some of it didn't really make much sense. For example, it was seen packed with 12 cores, 6 performance, and 6 efficiency, a total of 2 more than the M2 Pro chip, and oddly, 18 GPU cores, which is actually one less than the 19 GPU cores on the current M2 Pro. That basically means that this leaked M3 Pro chip was actually a binned base model chip, just like we currently have on the M2 Pro, where the bin chip only has 10 CPU cores and 16 GPU cores. But if you pay to upgrade it, it goes up to 12 CPU and 19 GPU. So my theory with this leaked M3 Pro is that the full unbinned M3 Pro chip is actually gonna have 14 CPU cores with eight performance and six efficiency with a 20 core GPU. And then another weird detail was the fact that the leaked M3 Pro chip had 36 gigabytes of RAM, which is odd because right now, the current M2 Pro chip can come with either 16 or 32 gigs. This basically proves that the entire M3 family of chips will come with brand new 12 gigabyte RAM modules, finally raising the base RAM on the regular M3, from the current eight gigs up to 12 gigs of RAM, which is huge. Oh, and by the way, the core layout for the regular M3 is rumored to stay the same. You got four performance cores, four efficiency, as well as the same 10 core GPU. So don't expect massive performance jumps there. Now moving on to the M3 Max chip, this is where it gets very interesting. First of all, the leaked chip that Mark Gurman saw in August came with 48 gigabytes of RAM, which is even more proof that the new RAM chips will come in 12 gigabyte modules with four of them going into the M3 Max. But the most insane detail was that it actually had a crazy 16 CPU cores, a huge jump from the current M2 Max that has 12. So for the first time, the Max will actually have a much better CPU than the Pro, which honestly makes so much more sense, but making it even better, there will apparently be 12 performance cores, a 50% increase from the current eight, with the same four efficiency cores as we have right now. Because of this, we're expecting a massive performance jump in terms of the CPU being almost as fast as the M2 Ultra chip, which is two M2 Maxes put together. This chip is gonna blow minds. But as far as the graphics, we're expecting a small jump up to 40 GPU cores from the previous 38, so graphics performance is not gonna see a huge difference. So with that said, what about the regular M3 chip? Is that also showing up at this event or not? 
Well, there are two different options for what can happen at this event, or basically two separate theories. So let's start with theory number one. At this upcoming October 30th event, only the M3 Pro and M3 Max chips will be announced, focusing on just the high-end MacBook Pros, which we pretty much know will happen at this point, thanks to a recent box leak that seems completely legit. And in that case, since we'd be getting the M3 Pro and Max MacBook Pros first, I totally recommend just buying the base 14 inch model right now instead of waiting for the Airs, mainly because of the performance differences and the lack of ports on the Air models, which really sucks compared to having a huge variety on these MacBook Pro models. But thankfully, our sponsor Basis has the perfect solution with their super affordable 13-in-1 hub, which gives you more ports than you'll ever need, with micro and regular SD card slots with high 104 megabyte per second transfer speed, a headphone jack, four USB ports labeled with their speeds, three of them supporting super fast 10 gigabit per second file transfer speeds, including a Type-C port, and an Ethernet jack. As for the display outputs, while Apple's MacBook Air is limited to one external display, the hub itself can support a triple display setup. You can use the USB-C port as well as the two HDMIs that support 4K 60Hz displays, the display port that supports 4K at 120Hz, and a VGA port. And finally, it has an additional pass-through charging USB-C port that can supply 85 watts of charging power, so you're left with the perfect hub for the 15-inch MacBook Air. So go ahead and order the Basis 13-in-1 hub for your MacBook today using the link in the description and and pinned comment below. Now getting back to theory number one, a delayed M3 chip launch until next year would likely mean that Apple would be using the second generation N3e process from TSMC for the M3 chip before later giving it to the A18 Pro chip in the iPhone. The main reason for this is that N3e has much better yields, which better matches the higher demand for the less expensive consumer focused Macs like the MacBook Air. This would solve all of of the chip yield issues and it would give Apple experience and more time to optimize the N3e process in preparation for those iPhone 16 Pro models with N3e chips. However, there are a couple of issues with this theory. First of all, it would be really weird for Apple to skip the M3 chip reveal and save it for later while revealing the M3 Pro and Max. And then on top of that, Mark Gurman has been hinting at the 24 inch iMac coming very soon with the M3 chip due to all of the shipping delays that we have with current iMacs. And then that brings us to theory number two. Apple is gonna reveal the M3, the M3 Pro, and M3 Max all at the same time next week, which sounds a bit weird, but there are a couple of good reasons for this as well. Reason number one is that Apple's M2 series of Macs were selling terribly bad because everybody thought that they were stopgap products, so they're waiting for three nanometer Macs, which I actually believe is true. Ming Chi Kuo himself, who is a very reputable leaker, has said that Apple could be pushing to get their Macs onto three nanometer M3 series chips because of bad M2 Mac sales, mainly because the performance jump just wasn't that impressive using the same five nanometer node as the M1 family of chips. This is actually something I said last year when I thought the M2 Pro and Max would be the first three nanometer chips. I said that if the entire M2 chip family ends up being on five nanometer again, then they would basically be DOA or dead on arrival because they'd be really disappointing products. And look where we are now with worse than expected sales for all of the M2 series Max. So theory number two could be happening because Apple is calling it quits on M2, skipping straight to M3 faster than previously planned in an attempt to save their Mac sales. However, if the M3 chip comes, it'll likely be limited to the M3 iMac at first, alongside a 13 inch MacBook Pro, and then they'd wait until next year for the new MacBook Airs. Another reason this second theory might make sense is because Apple could potentially be moving to a new special chip design method in order to improve the yields of these N3B chips that have pretty bad yields right now, and they would also improve their profit margins. iCave Dave had a theory that if Apple released the M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max chips at the same time next week, it might be because they're planning to 
create a single M3 Max die and cut it down into the M3 Pro and then cut it again into the regular M3, greatly improving yields, just like Apple was doing with the Max and Pro dies ever since the M1 family. I honestly don't know how much this makes sense, but it's definitely an interesting idea. But anyway, those are the specs and performance and leaks of the M3 series of chips, and I really hope they come next week. And if you're as excited as I am for this event, definitely subscribe above for our upcoming in-depth comparison videos, and check out one of those right over there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.